I'm John, I'm a compulsive eater, and I weigh and measure my food like everybody else off the gray sheet. And I write it down on my sponsors and then and I don't even I don't eat no matter what. And I eat no matter what, because when I get up, when I'm upset, I don't want to eat. And uh, you know, sometimes I have situations where I just and being on gray sheet, I have to say, like I don't want to eat because it's 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 just the compulsion has has left me. Um this time around, and I say that um, because when when I was when I was in and out, maybe eight years, um, I would take that first bite, and once I took that first bite, then it was like you know uh, off to the races where I was always looking for food. I was like the dog with the squirrel, you know, like food, food, you know, like food, food. Where's food? Just eat, eat, eat. Uh, and, and it might not have been a laugh, but it was always stopping. I, I had a job, which uh, I was allowed to be outside. And uh, it was easy to stop in any one of the delis and pick up something, the 7-Elevens and pick up something. And not that I ate a whole bunch, but there, there was always that, you know, I hear people mention and talk about it, is the noise in the head, having that noise in the head. And, uh, and I'm grateful for my sponsor who happens to be a really, really good friend of mine. Um, we met in AA about 20 years ago. He came into AA and he just says he remembers me because I was the first guy to say hello to him and uh, the first guy to reach out to him. So we became friends and uh, he came from big numbers. But uh, when I would do my experiment and, and try it on my own, because like I was sharing this the other day on the uh, 8.30 meeting, that, uh, you know, when I, would get, when I would get off the ship of Gracie where everybody was happy and everybody was doing it and everybody was following the plan and I might have gotten off and tried it, tried it my way again to see if I can do it. I got onto the dinghy and I was in the ref waters and it just never worked out for me. And uh, so, you know, I, I just kept doing that. But when I would call him up and I wouldn't call him up because I never wanted to jeopardize his abstinence. I always felt like it. I felt like this guy is abstinent and I don't want to jeopardize his recovery. And I, so I wouldn't, so I, so I, I actually lost a friend when I was at a gray sheet and, and it was just in my head, you know, that I used to think this way. And then I didn't want to be around him because, you know, he was following the gray sheet. So that was another aspect of it. I didn't want to be around him, but, but when I did finally call him up and uh, he didn't go chasing me though, he didn't chase me at all. But when I did finally call him up, he sort of, uh, you know, he was just like, okay, what's your next meal? Well, all right, what's what's next? You know, okay, give me a meal. Meanwhile, you know, when I call him up, it's like, I don't want to hear that from him. I don't want to hear what my next meal is. You know, it's like, let's wait till tomorrow. And it was like, dinner, you know, dinner was coming up. Well, give me a dinner. Just like, you know how you do He's like, it, it was the same thing when I got sober. Uh, when I got sober in AA 88, uh, I was at, I, I was at an emotional bottom and, uh, you know, I was just so emotionally burnt and, and my mind and there was yelling in the house and screaming, whatever. And, and, uh, I, I just gave up and I, I surrendered at that moment with, with the drugs and stuff and the alcohol. And I, I remember it was late at night. It was like one o'clock. And I says, if you want me to get effing help, then you take me this effing moment. And my father got up and he said, let's go. And I was like, but wait a minute, we, we got to find it. And it's the same thing with Gracie, you know? So be prepared. If you're having a hard time and you call somebody from Gracie, be prepared to start that moment. You know, there's no, there's no waiting. And, and really, quite honestly, that was the best way to go. Get me at the moment of my emotional distress, you know? Get me at that moment when I am beaten. You know, and I never was, I didn't, and it's a yes for me. And I want to say that because, you know, like my sponsor was saying, you know, I wasn't really large, large numbers, you know, because I would do the other things. I would do the exercise. I would do the, I would diet. I would not eat. I would, you know, I, I would force myself, but, but I still had the same mind where I just had to have something when I was out, when I wasn't in gray sheet, I had to eat, I had to eat, I had to eat. And, uh, 
And I heard this the other day and I heard it before, but you know, sometimes it just stays with you. And the peace, the peace I have with food when I follow Gray Sheet is tremendous to me. The peace is unbelievable because I have that peace. I don't have that racing mind where I always have to eat something. I finally got to the point in my life for today because I might be out of here tomorrow. I might break my abstinence. And that's just for me, you know what I mean? I, Cause I know anything can happen, but just for today, I live, I, I eat to live. And, and I really, I always wanted to achieve that. I wanted to get to my point in life where I was just eating to, to survive. And not only that with the gray sheet, I am able to eat, to live, but yet I can have really, really great stuff. You know, I, I can have really, really good foods. And I am a little bit experimental. I try different things. Sometimes I screw up and, and I like punish myself. And I say, well, you got to eat it anyway, you know? And, and I eat it and I say, well, I ain't going to do that again. But overall, you know, the food is unbelievable. And uh, I'm always satisfied. And by taking out the flour, the sugar, and the grains, by, by taking this out of my diet, the same way that keeping alcohol out of my body and the other things and alcohol specifically with the, the way it ferments in your body, it keeps me from wanting to eat after I just had a gigantic meal with carbs and sugar, you know, and I can never understand that. I had that gigantic meal with carbs and sugar, you know, it always had to be the biggest and always had to have a lot. And it, it, it was the stuff you get before your meal in the diner or the, when you go out to eat, it's the one they put on your plate and you eat like four pieces of it and you throw that, I guess we could say butter, right? <laughs> you throw that on there and uh, and then your meal comes and you're full from that, but yet you eat anyway. And that's what happens when I have that. Because I was always fighting the, uh, you know, you come in in the beginning and you sort of fight with your sponsor in, in, in a loving way, you know, but wait, what about this? This is good for you, you know? Uh, why can't I have that? And I can never understand the uh, grains. Why the, grains are good for you? What's the matter with you? Like grains are good for you, and then, and you should you would think I would notice, right? And then I'm listening to meeting one day, and somebody says, "Oh yeah, the grains ferment in my body like alcohol," and it just was like, "Oh, like why didn't like why didn't I see that?" You know, I'm in AA like 32 years. Like why didn't I see that? You know, it's just these. You have these epiphanies, I guess you call them, these moments of enlightenment when you uh, ingratiate. And it's like even, you know, any 12-step program, you'll hear something over and over. And then one day that thing that you hear it, it just like clicks in and you, and you get the connection with the two. It's like, oh, I understand. I get it now. I get it. So stay away from that stuff. And it's, and it's easy. It's, it's simple. Well, it's, what is it? Simple, but it's easy. I don't know. You know, sometimes I'm, 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 I'm dyslexic. And so I forget, mess up on the words sometimes, but it's, it's easy, but it's simple, but no, but it's not hard. Something like that. I don't know. Something like that. Everybody knows what I'm talking about. So I don't have to go on. And uh, so, you know, by, by removing that stuff, I, I haven't had the compulsion for a year. So within this last time, I had the availability of making a lot of meetings with the virtual meetings. I, uh, and I, I said to myself, okay, I'm thinking, well, what, what do I need to do differently? How do I need to get connected to Gray Sheet? And, uh, and having the opportunity to make a lot of meetings, which I did, and, and then all the fact that we're staying home and this other stuff, I said, I was going to count the days. I was going to share because I didn't count them before. I would count here and there. So I said, I'm going to count my days at every meeting. I counted my days to 90 days. And then I would count like the month and stuff. And uh, so I counted my days. Uh, when I had about six months or so, somebody kept mentioning it to me. The host of the meeting was up and she says it'd be a good idea if I take it. And I took the suggestion because I knew that would keep me abstinent for three months because I know me like even this even talking now today on this meeting I will stay abstinent you know for at least a week because I shared all this stuff with you so I'm not going to share and then all of a sudden I come back and he's like oh this guy is full of full of crap listen to him he said he was absent he has all this good stuff and look he's eating again five minutes so Johnny 
Okay, what do I got? Uh, five minutes left? Yeah, five minutes left. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, so I know that, uh, you know, this service keeps me abstinent. Now, now, and I, I didn't, like I spoke here about maybe uh, six months ago, maybe more, maybe, maybe more, give or take. And they asked me if I wanted to be, uh, you know, have my, uh, have this recorded. And I was like trying to be humble. No, no, no. I have to be humble, you know? And then somebody said, my sponsor said to me, he goes, yeah, but if you were recorded, then you have to stay abstinent because now you record it forever. So that's it. I just blew my abstinence forever. Now I have to stay abstinent. And, uh, but that's not true. So, so the thing is, I says, all right, let him, let him record me. But these are the things I did this time. You know, and by knowing and understanding and, and, and using the ferment, ferment, fermentation of the grains, the flour and sugar in my body. Where, and I don't understand a lot of things why people in my other fellowship, that they can have those things that I can't, why my body does ferments it as alcohol would, where I had the compulsion. I don't understand that, but, but that's just, but all I have to know is like that it's, it's, that's all I have to know that I'm the one with the problem. You know, I always like to share about my neighbor. A couple of people here know me about my neighbor. His name is Mario. I love him a lot. And uh, he's a pain in my butt. <laughs> he's like, he's constantly, I was there the other day. He's constantly asking me, you know, do I want to eat? Do I want to eat? You want to eat? Can you eat this? Can you eat? No. Oh, wow. I can't believe it. Can you eat this? Oh, no. Oh, I can't believe it. I can't. He doesn't. Understand. He don't understand because he can't do what we do. He doesn't need to understand. I mean, they actually fight me about different things. You know, they don't understand the healthy things. Well, why can't you have that? That's healthy. And, you know, I, I got out of the debating I'm off the debating team with, the, with what I do to stay abstinent in my life. And, you know, I, I, I try to be nice because I really like them. And I just say, you know, I have to say that I'm not like you do not need to you do not need to understand why I do this. You know, they spoke about the, the one day a week and I tried it, tried it doesn't work for me. The one day a week does not work for me, uh, doesn't work for me. Before you know what I'm doing every day again, it just doesn't work. Certain things that are healthy for you that I can't have, and we don't have it on the gray sheet, but when I was trying to eat healthy, they don't work for me. Uh, I find that the gray sheet is the only thing that works for me. The only thing that stops the noise in my head, the only thing that sort of puts a, uh, a damper on that wanting to eat all the time. I eat normally, I eat weighed and measured meals. Why do I weigh and measure? Because I have, I also have, this is another words I learned in Gracie, I have broken eyes. I love that expression. I have broken eyes. And my, my eyes say, well, take three pieces of protein. You know, it's like, take three. Why are you gonna, but by putting a certain amount, by putting that balance, by having the discipline of having so much on my plate, one minute left. It's like, okay, thank you. It, it keeps me from just having what I'm supposed to have. And it's such a science to the way we eat. And uh, I, just, I just love it. I mean, I love being on it. I, I had to convince certain people. And, and, I, and I'm going to end where, uh, you know, like sometimes you have to tell people. Like, and, and I love this saying that people told me and I heard here is what part of, of me taking care of myself bothers you so much? Why is it such a problem for me to take care of myself? Because that's what I do when I'm on gray sheet. I take care of myself because I don't have, I don't know what it is. I don't have the stop, the stop button when it comes to eating the flour, the sugar, and the grains. By being on gray sheet, stay away, being connected with people who do what I do, I feel that connection with each other, with you guys. And it just makes me want to keep coming. And I'm due for another commitment, which I will pick up soon because that'll keep me absent for another three months. And that's all I have. And thank you 
Thank you, AVC, for asking me to share. Thanks. That's all I have.